Today's class is all about reading your Bible. So, if, if you're like me, you will find every once in a while this thought creeps into your mind that asks the question, how do I know that the Bible is God's Word? Why should I spend so much time reading and studying it? For me, the best answer lies in the concept of fulfilled prophecy. There is no other book that makes the kinds of specific predictions that are then fulfilled like the Bible does. To be sure, there are books and authors that claim to predict the future, but pay attention to how often they are correct and pay attention as to what kind of details are in the prophecy. If you want to do more research on this subject, I'd encourage you to get a copy of Evidence That Demands a Verdict by Josh McDowell. He has several chapters devoted to showing you that you can trust the Bible and specifically in this area of fulfilled prophecy. Now, there are literally hundreds of prophecies that we could look at, but to me, the most important category of prophecies are those about Jesus. The Bible contains over 300 prophecies just for the, the first coming of Jesus. They don't just predict that a great leader will come. They tell us about the date of his coming, his lineage, where he would be born, his betrayal, the price of his betrayal, his suffering, his crucifixion, even his resurrection. And I'm just scratching the surface of the prophecies. The odds of someone fulfilling these specific prophecies are simply astronomical. There is no other explanation except that God, who knows the future, has shared it with us. He says in Isaiah 48, 5, Even from the beginning I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I proclaimed it to you. There is no other book like the Bible. Now, why is the Bible so vital? Let me share. I'm just going to give you 10 things. I could share you dozens more, but let me just give you 10 things. First is that it gives us a true picture of who God is. Jeremiah 23, 32. Listen to this. It says, Behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. He's talking about false prophets, people who, who give the silliest ideas of what God is like that are not true. It's only in God's proven, tested word that we have a clear idea of just who God is. God hates it when people make up these silly ideas about who he is. Number two, it gives us guidance. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There are times when I'm just not sure which path I should take. And more than once, God has used his word, the principles in his word to help me make healthy choices. Number three, it gives me, it gives us comfort when we go through difficult times. Psalm 119 verse 92, unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. Number four, it helps keep us from sin. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You see this in the life of Jesus when he's tempted by Satan. He's over and over, he's tempted with different things. In each temptation, he responds with the phrase, It is written. Number five, it offers us spiritual protection. The Bible is called a sword. Ephesians 6, 17 says, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's part of how we fight our spiritual battles. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses four and five. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, part of how, how we do this is by learning to align our ideas with God's word and not the things that the, that the world tells us. Number six, it builds our faith. Romans ten seventeen says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I, I think this happens as I read, I understand, and then I learn to do what it says. 
my steps of obedience proves to me that I can trust God and his word. It's, it's effective. It works. Number seven, it nourishes our spiritual life. When Jesus was answering Satan's temptation about turning stones to bread, he said, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We need more than physical nourishment. We need spiritual nourishment. And that comes from God's word. Number eight, it brings cleansing. When Paul is writing about husbands and wives, he says in Ephesians 5, husbands love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. I find in my life that when I am tempted with sin, sometimes I have a hard time getting those bad thoughts out of my head. I need to get my, my brain washed in a way. God's word is the best kind of brainwashing. Putting God's word into my head puts my mind back on track. This is one of the ways that, that Jesus helps us to grow to be more like him by washing us in the water of his word. Number nine, it trains us to be useful. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Taking time to learn your Bible is a little bit like going to boot camp, basic training. It helps you to be more useful on the battlefield of life. The Bible has the answers to life and not just for you, but for the people that we live with, the people we work with, the people that we care about. Number 10, it's alive. Hebrews 4, 12 says that the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, the joints and marrow and is, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's not like any other book. It's not just a bunch of words. It's, it's, it's alive, but it's not some freakish Frankenstein monster. There is a sense in which we will, uh, God will use his word on a daily basis to speak to specific situations in our life. Each time you read through the Bible, you, you ask in prayer, you ask, God, would you, would you direct me? Would you speak to me? And you'll find that God will highlight different passages. Uh, and, and every time you're going through the Bible, some, you'll go over the same passages sometimes, you know, every year. And you find that your life is in a different place and God will speak differently to you because it's alive. Don't miss out on what God wants to say to you. Now, let me talk for a minute about reading, meditating, and memorizing. At the very basic level, we all need to be simply reading God's word. We need to get it into our hearts and our minds. We, but we also ought to take it a bit deeper than just reading. Psalm 1, David says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season, <coughs> whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Meditating on God's word is about thinking and pondering it. It's like, it's like chewing your food, getting all the flavor. Sometimes it's helpful to take a verse and just read it over and over again. Think about a phrase. Maybe you're thinking about a whole paragraph. A great way of doing this is by working at memorizing God's word. I find that the process of memorizing scripture, I become more acquainted with the depths of it and I see more and more of how it applies to my life. Um, let me talk about the, the issue of obedience. It, it is important to read the Bible. It, it's even more important that we learn to apply it to our lives, that we learn to obey it because it's what gets us through the storms of life. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 24, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, 
I will liken him to a man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended. The floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. If you pay attention to the story, both men were going to go through a storm, but only one survived. Both men heard the word, but only one man did what the word says. Now, and, and so that's how we survive. It's by learning to obey. But let me just say this. We're not going to be perfect in this. I'm not giving you an excuse, but we're not going to be perfect in it. This is, this is part of the slow but steady maturity that we grow in. Don't quit because you stumble. You get back up and you try again. Now, I can't stress how important it is that you learn to read your Bible every day. Uh, the Bible is one of the key main keys to our growth as Christians. But don't make the mistake of hunting and pecking for a different verse each day. Make it your discipline to read through the Bible. Read an entire book of the Bible. Not necessarily in one shot, but just each time you read a little, read a little bit more in the passage. Our, our church has a plan that we've been using for years. You can find the plan on the church app. It, and if you follow that plan, you read about three chapters a day and you cover the entire Bible in a year. It's two chapters, Old Testament, one chapter, New Testament. I've been doing this for, for over 30 years. Now, maybe reading three chapters a day sounds a little ambitious for you. Well, our plan has two parts, Old and New Testament, two chapters, Old Testament, one chapter, New Testament. And if you want, maybe, maybe you should just start off by reading one chapter in the New Testament. And, and you do that every day. The important thing is to start a habit. That's the hardest thing to do is to start the habit of reading. They say that if you do the same thing over and over again for 30 days in a row, you will have established a habit. I found it, it helpful over the years in training people to do this, that it's good to have uh, somebody else along with you who's, who's keeping you accountable. And every day you're reading the same passage and then you can share with each other what, what you've been reading and helps you stay on track. So to wrap it up, I just can't tell you how important it is for your spiritual growth that you establish a daily time of reading your Bible. It's one of the key building blocks to a stable, mature relationship with Jesus. I hope that helps.